whale dead after chowing down on 80 plastic bags. News of a whale's death coming out of Thailand this week shows us the sad, sad consequences of plastic waste. According to AFP, a male pilot whale was found struggling to stay alive in a canal in southern Thailand near the Malaysian border. A team of veterinary staff tried to help the wounded creature, but its condition got the best of him last Friday afternoon. An autopsy of the mammal revealed a gut-wrenching discovery. The AFP reports that officials found 80 plastic bags inside the whale's belly, weighing a combined 8 kilograms. Those chunks of plastic were likely consumed by the whale, which probably thought they were squid or other fish. A marine biologist told the AFP it's a huge problem, explaining that 300 marine animals die in Thailand each year after eating plastic. That number not only applies to pilot whales, but also sea turtles and dolphins. According to nonprofit organization Sea Turtle Conservancy, over 100 marine animals are killed annually due to plastic debris in the ocean. The conservancy says that there's 100 million tons of plastic in the world's oceans. Sadly, these numbers are probably only going to get higher. Here's more on pollution and the changing climate. Most of the plastic in the ocean comes from these countries. Plastic waste is slowly but surely taking over the world's oceans. And the bulk of them apparently comes from just five Asian countries. A study from Ocean Conservancy estimates that 55 to 60 percent of plastic polluting the oceans comes from five countries, China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uncollected and mismanaged waste on land accounts for about 80 percent of the 8 million metric tons of trash that flow into the oceans each year. Environmental organization Greenpeace claims corporations are also at fault for selling products in single-use plastic packaging, especially in so-called sachet economies like the Philippines. Various studies have shown that plastic pollution negatively impacts marine animals and may be indirectly affecting humans through the food chain. Fortunately, improving waste management practices in the five countries can result in a 45 percent reduction of global plastic waste leakage by 2025. In tackling plastic pollution, everyone has a role to play. From governments and big conglomerates to the people on the street, every bit helps. The state of the climate is dismal. A report from the U.S.'s National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration confirmed that 2016 was a year of extreme heat, surpassing 2015 as the warmest year since records began 137 years ago. A strong El Nino coupled with long-term global warming led to land and sea surface temperatures reaching unprecedented heights in 2016, making it the hottest year on record. The planet's greenhouse gas emissions likewise went up, with carbon dioxide concentrations increasing to more than 400 parts per million for the first time ever. Global sea levels are at their highest, at 3.25 inches more than the 1993 average. The past two decades have seen sea levels go up at an average of 0.13 inches annually, with the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans showing the highest rates of increase. Water and precipitation cycles exhibited extremes, with droughts plaguing parts of Africa and South America. Other areas, meanwhile, were beset by floods and tropical cyclones, which in 2016 numbered 93. The report's findings emphasize that the symptoms of climate change show no sign of slowing and will likely intensify unless major changes are made. But with recent blows to efforts combating climate change, including the Trump administration pulling out of the Paris Agreement, it seems we'll see more record-breaking weather in the years to come. South Asia faces a hot, humid, and deadly future. Climate change will make parts of South Asia too hot to live in by the end of the century, threatening the lives of millions of the world's poorest people. In 2015, more than 3,500 people were killed in heat waves in the region, but things are apparently going to get much, much worse. The authors of a new study say densely populated agricultural regions in South Asia will experience increases in heat and humidity that will make them uninhabitable by the year 2100. The scientists say if climate change continues on its current trajectory, heat waves will cause the wet bulb temperature to rise to deadly levels in parts of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Wet bulb temperature is calculated by combining temperature, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover to measure heat stress in direct sunlight. According to the study, by the year 2100, 75% of South Asia's population would experience wet bulb temperatures higher than 31 degrees Celsius, which is dangerous for humans. 
In this scenario, 4% of the population would also experience deadly wet bulb temperatures exceeding 35 degrees. South Asia is home to one-fifth of the world's population and has high levels of poverty. Scientists say the poor will feel the brunt of rising temperatures because they lack access to air conditioning and other methods to beat the heat. They say cutting greenhouse gas emissions would help lower the impact of climate change on the poor. Millions perish yearly due to pollution. New data on pollution shows the air we breathe can be lethal. A new report from the World Health Organization says that 7 million people die annually from exposure to polluted air. The organization says 9 out of 10 people everywhere are exposed to dangerous pollutants. The WHO says that 34% of all pollution-related deaths are due to heart disease and 20% are from stroke. The rest consist of various lung-related conditions including pneumonia, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and lung cancer. Concerningly, many are linked to air inside the home. Around 3.6 million deaths are connected to exposure from indoor air pollutants such as fumes from cooking fires and stoves. The most vulnerable are children under 5 where pneumonia is the biggest risk to life, women working in smoky kitchens and people who work outside. The WHO says outdoor air pollution in cities and rural settings is caused by industry and energy supply, transportation, waste management, dust, farming practices and household energy. Regional estimates put pollution fatalities at over 4 million in West Pacific and Southeast Asia. That number is around 1 million in Africa. In the Middle East and the North Africa region, half a million pass away due to pollution. That's around the same for Europe. While in the Americas, 300,000 perish annually due to exposure. The WHO says that many of these deaths, as many as 25% of all child mortalities, can be prevented by cleaning up the environment. Dirty old birds show changes in U.S. air pollution. Researchers analyzed the amount of soot on birds in museums from Rust Belt cities to track air pollution in the U.S. over the last 135 years. A new paper shows the discoloration of birds in museum collections can be used to estimate the amount of black carbon air over time. Researchers sampled over a thousand birds collected over the last 135 years to find out and quantify the effects of soot in the air in Rust Belt cities like Chicago, Detroit and Pittsburgh. To track changes in sootiness, the scientists photograph the birds and measure the light reflected off of them. They found that older birds were dirtier and new birds were cleaner. The team discovered that soot on birds closely tracks the use of coal over time. Researchers also pointed out that even though newer birds are cleaner, it doesn't necessarily mean U.S. air is less polluted. Many of the pollutants released into the atmosphere today aren't as easily tracked as soot.